Welcome to Active Points Wellness. My name is Warren Schick and today in my video blog we're going to be talking about shoulder mobility. And so what I wanted to cover today was uh, a little bit of the anatomy and physiology behind uh, uh, shoulder mobility and then we're going to talk about three simple uh, movements that you can utilize to help improve overall mobility and function. And so in talking about the anatomy we have the glenohumeral joint, uh, we have the acromioclavicular joint, and then we have this sternal clavicular joint here on the midline of the body where the, the shoulder blade or shoulder bone comes into the sternum. But uh, more importantly on the back we have this uh, scapulothoracic joint. So this free floating bone uh, sits on the rib cage and is actually held in place by musculature. It's also uh, very important in, a, in the mobility of the arm and shoulder as we uh, move our hand. Uh, this bone floats and is, uh, there's a very distinct rhythm to the movement that occurs uh, with that shoulder blade as we move our hand through space. Um, but as we do know, we're not uh, operating in a vacuum. So each joint that we have has a kind of an orchestra of um, combination of other movements that occur through the spine, that occur through the hips, and all the way down uh, through the ankle and into the feet. And so um, while we're looking at shoulder mobility, it's important to understand that we do need to address the mobility of all these different joints kind of in a more global picture uh, to ensure that we're gaining the mobility we need um, and, and addressing um, the overall function of the body. So our bodies are uh, a continuum of soft tissue. So we have these bones that sit here. Uh, however, there's um, uh, muscles and tendons, there's ligaments. Um, we have uh, this uh, kind of newly discussed uh, fascial system, this kind of, uh, it's almost like saran wrap that surround all of the bones, all of the muscles and ligaments. And it's important to understand that it's a continuum of soft tissue. It's not uh, segmental as we kind of, I think, learn it in our anatomy books uh, where we have the biceps, for example, and uh, that uh, flexes the elbow joint. Um, it's a, a lot more complicated and I think we're coming to learn a lot uh, more about um, how these different systems and tissues all integrate and create a continuum of movement. And so within that, there's um, through the nervous system a really um, wondrous uh, neural uh, uh, web of information that gets uh, sent to the central nervous system and up to the brain, providing our body with a picture, our brain with a, a great uh, picture of where our body moves in space. And so we have these uh, nerve endings or these uh, receptors uh, within the muscles, so muscle spindles, Gold, Golgi tendon organs, Raffini endings, uh, free nerve endings, and then this new fascial system has uh, you know three defined but several uh, proprioceptive uh, receptors that provide information about um, how our body is moving. It, um, they track kind of the velocity of movement, uh, the tension that's uh, within the tissue, and then also like compressive forces, so within the joints. Um, it gives a good spatial picture of, um, to the brain of uh, how our body is moving in space. And uh, when we lose that signaling, our picture is faded, and so uh, our body in, in response to that really finds a way to protect our joints and soft tissues from further damage. So the less information we have coming through this system, the more restrictive our uh, central nervous system and brain become um, to protect the joints of the body, protect the soft tissues of the body. And so in understanding that, there's, there's this concert of um, uh, information that needs to be um, primed for our body to function as it, um, to, through its potential, um, we want to harness that ability, uh, that proprioceptive feedback within the uh, exercise and mobility routines that we provide uh, to uh, rehabilitate from an injury, for instance, or to increase and enhance performance. And so we're going to try and work with that, those systems to um, you know, work and improve our shoulder mobility. So uh, uh, stay tuned for the next video and uh, 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 try out these different exercises as a method for improving your functional mobility.